Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... Dead Men Prowl, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. What strange thing is this which has enveloped the seacoast village of Holman? Skeletons abroad, dead men on the prowl. Three men have died in Holman, one naturally and two others violently. And since the three have been placed in the tiny village morgue, all three have shown terrifying activity. Old Doc Sim's body was seen hurrying from the morgue. The thing that dragged Gail Stanley from her bedroom window and buried her alive in the sand had the bloated face and staring eyes of a strangled man. And there had been a rope around his neck. This description fitted Andrew Walters, who had been found hanged. Had he risen from his resting place in the morgue and committed the crime? Captain Friday had raced to the morgue to see. Yes, I raced to the morgue. Walter's body was there, but the shoes were damp and covered with wet sand. And now the third body was gone. The body of Rich Hartley's half-wit son, who had been shot through the heart. What mischief would this prowling dead creature bestir? All through the night, Captain Friday and his companion, Andres Ruiz, searched, but in vain. Back in the captain's summer home, Gail Stanley and Carmel Ruiz slept in a barricaded room, while Dr. Jamie Croft and Martin Stanley, Gail's brother, patrolled the house. Morning dawned, and with the light, Captain Friday and Andres returned. Outside the house, the captain paused. Yeah, look here, Andres. Huh. These footprints? Uh-huh. These are the footprints left by whoever buried Miss Stanley alive. Santa Maria. Uh-huh. Yeah, these are the ones, all right. What is this you say? I said those are Andrew Walter's footprints, all right. Couldn't miss. Look at the impression of the heel. Uh, measure's right, too. You, you think that... I'm not thinking anything. I'm just stating a fact. Now, come on in the house. I need coffee. Oh, senor, I think what I need most is sleep. Yeah, no sleep for me. I'll knock some of that sand off your feet. See it. Everybody must be asleep. Somebody will be around. Hello. That you, Captain Friday? Oh, hello, Dr. Croft. You think we were lost? Oh, you two must be about dead. I have some hot coffee for you. Come out in the kitchen. Oh, good. Now, where's young Stanley? Oh, I let him go to bed a couple of hours ago. No use all of us being dead on our feet. Should have gotten a couple of hours yourself. Oh, no. A man of my profession's used to this sort of thing. Well, how about frying a couple of eggs and some bacon for each room? No, no, no. Coffee's all I want now. How about you, Andres? Uh, no, nothing but coffee. Thank you, Dr. Croft. Well, I'm going to duck my head under the cold faucet. <sighs> Dead on my feet. What kept you so long? What did you find? <sighs> I found plenty. I'll give you the whole dope. There are... Bath. Yeah. Oh, feels good. Yeah. Want to try it, Andres? Oh, please, I, I abominate cold water. Yeah, <laughs> clear out your head. Here, Captain, I'll pour the coffee. Draw up a chair, Andres. See. Si. Well, in the first place, Doctor, I want to tell you it's a doggone shame that you're not getting the rest you expected. Oh, forget it, Captain. When I asked you over here, well, I said... As a sa- matter of fact, old chap, you didn't ask me. If I remember correctly, I practically begged you to bring me. I insisted. I wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> yeah, but I know you wanted to come. You needed the rest. Oh, well, this excitement will probably do me more good than the rest. Come now, what did you find at the morgue? Uh, Doctor, I don't know what to think. Andrew Walter's body was gone then? No, it wasn't. No? Uh, It was there all right, but... But there was wet sand on his shoes. Mm -hmm. But my uncle, he is dead. I saw him myself. Nevertheless, the tracks out there in the sand were made by Andy Walter's shoes. No doubt, I suppose. Not a bit. Old boy got up, pulled off his little stunt, and returned to his resting place in the morgue. Oh, that's silly. Yes, it does sound far-fetched. Things like this do not happen where I come from. (laughs) Well, I can assure you, my young friend, they don't happen here in California very often. 
But uh, see here, Captain, what was it that kept you out until dawn? Now the body of Rich Hartley's half-wit boy is gone. What? Yeah. Swell, huh? You... You don't suppose he got up and walked off, do you? No, I don't. That isn't all of our story either, Doctor. Still more? Yeah. On our way to the morgue, we found the body of Doc Sims. Oh, see here now. In what condition? That's queer. We found him lying in the same position as we picked him up on the beach. Sort of sprawled, you know, on his face. Mm Mm-hmm. Gives me the shivers. What did you do with him? Well, he was dead, so we carried him back to the morgue. Naturally. Say, Doctor, I think it'd be a good idea for you to go over sometime this morning and have a look at him. Yes, I think so, too, but aren't you rather optimistic? What do you mean? Well, he means if he walk away once, what is to prevent him from doing it again, huh? Exactly. Well, maybe we should have him handcuffed to the slab. What kind of a case is this, anyway? I'm used to having a dead body stay where I put it. Well, I'll run over. I doubt if even the hardiest dead body will have the audacity to go prowling about in daylight. Well, I hope you're amused. <laughs> Quite. Hey, listen, Doctor. Did you ever hear of anything like this mess before? You mean... Dead men walking? Yeah. Why, yes, I have, Captain. There are a number of records. Records of dead men walking? I cannot believe it. I personally know of a case. Uh Uh-oh. One of the girls must be awake. I heard a movement in the back of the house. Have they slept all night? Soundly. Drink your coffee. I'll be right back. Oh, Senor Friday. It is great relief that it is daylight. I tell you what, Andres... When you've finished your coffee, go in and catch three or four hours sleep. The doctor and I will keep Carmel under our eyes all the time. Oh, please, how can I ever thank you? Oh, forget it. You know, this cousin of mine, she is more dear to me. Both than... girls are awake. Miss Stanley insisted she's able to get up. Oh, that's something. I was afraid we were going to have a sick girl on our hands. Miss Stanley has a marvelous stamina. By the way, I should, uh, I should advise making light of her experience. Oh, okay, doctor. But see here... You started to tell us of a personal experience. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, there was a chap over in San Francisco who was pronounced dead. He was attended through his illness by a reputable physician and uh, seemed no doubt at all. The body was sent to an undertaking parlor and all funeral arrangements were made when... when uh, he suddenly got up and started wandering around the place. Sacrament. Frightened the attendants. The matter, of course, was hushed up. You mean he went on living? No, no. He never actually knew what happened. His mind was dazed. He died naturally a few hours later. Uh, what you doctors don't get mixed up with. Then, then there's the hypnotic state, which is practiced in India. You've read of mystics being hypnotized and allowing themselves to be buried alive? When they're in that state, all bodily functions are suspended. No physician in the world could be certain whether they are living or dead. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some of that in French Indochina. The human body is a curious instrument and is capable of playing strange and gruesome pranks on its own. Doctor, what you say makes me wish never to die. But look here, Doctor. Natural death is one thing, violent death quite another. You don't mean to say anything like this could happen to a person who'd been hanged or shot. You're quite right, Captain. From a medical standpoint, it's quite impossible for such a thing to happen. And yet... And this skeleton which Carmel and I have seen... I don't understand that at all, Andres. Skeletons, after all, are something used to frighten children. There's no sense in even considering your skeleton. But we have seen it. I don't doubt your word. You say you saw it, and I believe you did. At least you saw something you took for a skeleton. Well, we've got to take it into consideration, Doctor. It fits into this puzzle somewhere. Now, first, Carmel and Andres see the skeleton on the beach. And then we find Doc Sims dead on the beach. Then we find Rich Hartley's boy murdered in the morgue. After that, Andrew Walters hanged. It's unnatural. They're all hooked up together somehow. But uh, see here, Captain. Do you think there's anything to this idea? Doc Sims and Andrew Walters were enemies. They were the two rich men in the village. You mean somebody bumped off the two rich men out of spite? Yes, but where does Rich Hartley's half-wit son come in? Uh, Maybe there's an excuse for two rich men, but... Why drag in a poor, foolish half-wit? Haven't the slightest idea. And then there's this business of enticing Gail and Martin Stanley here. Summoned to the funeral of their uncle, Doc Sims, before he was dead. Now, who did that? And that's another queer angle, Captain. 
How does it happen that each of the two rich men have two heirs on the scene at the time or shortly after their deaths? Uh-huh. Andrew Walter's heirs being Andres here and his cousin Carmel. And Gail and Martin Stanley representing Doc Sims. Shh. Here come the girls. Oh. Really, Carmel, I'm perfectly all right. You still must be careful. Oh, well, good morning. Are you feeling tip-top, Miss Stanley? Yeah, almost. A little shaky, but otherwise... Here, you better sit down. A strong cup of coffee would put you into shape. And you, Carmel? Oh, I'm just glad it's morning. I had the most horrible dream. Where's Martin? Oh, your brother is still sleeping, Miss Stanley. Had rather a difficult night. Andres, you'd better run along. You need rest. Oh, haven't you been to bed at all? Please, Carmel, you are all right? Yes, really, I am. Why haven't you been to bed? Well, I have been with Captain Friday. We have only just come in. Just come in? Well, where in the world have you been? Oh, just looking the situation over. Come, come. Now, you children sit down and drink your coffee while I fry you some bacon and eggs. How do you like them? Oh, over. Couldn't I do it? I am the doctor. Do as I say. Well... I like mine over. Straight up, please, and not too hard. Uh, go along, Andres. Uh, please, if you will excuse me. Of course, Andres. Uh, if you will call me in a couple of hours. We'll route you out, and we want you on the job. <laughs> Very well. Uh, please do not forget now. Oh. Sounds like visitors already this morning. Not surprising after the night we've given this village. You go and see to your visitor, Captain, while I feed the ladies. I have a hunch it's Rich Hartley. Oh, well, the father of the... Murdered boy, eh? Yeah. I'm not going to like this. It sounds like he meant business. What would you be doing if you had a son lying in the morgue this morning? While Dr. Croft and the two girls are in the kitchen of Captain Friday's beach cottage preparing breakfast, the captain is on the front steps interviewing a delegation of Holman citizens. Dr. Croft is acting as chief cook and bottle washer and isn't making any too good a job of it. Well, there goes the eggs into the frying pan. There's one. There's two. Two apiece, hmm? Oh, Doctor, your toast is burning. Oh, my eyes. Oh, and look at the bacon. Oh, my joke. Oh, I say, Carmel, lend a hand with that toast. <laughs> May I help, too? No, you sit quiet. You're our invalid for the morning. Oh, dear. Well, how's the toast? I can scrape it. Well, the bacon will do. Eggs are coming along nicely. Here, Carmel, hand me the plates. I'll hold them while you take up the bacon and eggs. That's an idea. There. That's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are for Miss Stanley, and this is for you. Mm, just the smell makes me feel like a new person. <laughs> All right. Now, you two sit there and eat and answer some questions. Answer them? Why, well, I'm full of questions myself. No, it's important that we get a few details straight at once, if you don't mind. Of course not. Mm hmm. Now, Miss Stanley, why do you think that you and your brother were called to Holman? Well, because of Doc Sims' death. But uh, why you two specifically? Saying for the moment that everything concerning Doc Sims' death is normal, why should you two young people be the ones called? Well, it's been understood right along that when Doc Sims died, we would be his heirs. But uh, why not your father and mother, Doc Sims' sister and brother-in-law? Well, mother and dad are very old. Neither is well. I see. It seemed very certain that our uncle, Doc Sims, would outlive both of them, and so he made his will directly to Martin and me. Yes, uh, no other relatives? No. Mm -hmm. So, by Doc Sims' death, you and your brother come into valuable property. Uh, have you always had money? Well, only what we were able to earn, but mother and dad have enough laid aside to make them comfortable. That telegram you received notifying you of Doc Sims' death, you have no idea who might have sent it? Well, I don't even know who could have been interested. But what about Doc Sims' attorney? Well, I'd never heard that he had one. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway... Had it been he, he certainly would have signed it. Yes. Dr. Croft, you keep hinting at something strange about my uncle's death. Last night you said it, and just now you said something about taking for granted that his death is normal. What is it? What's the matter? See here, Miss Stanley, you're bound to know. It's like this. When you arrived last night, Dr. Sims was prowling about at large. He, he what? You see, Captain Friday and I had taken him to the morgue and... Well, he got up and left. Oh, how terrible. Yes, it was highly embarrassing. But... 
Well, where is he now? Well, this morning he's back in the morgue. Well, is he dead? So Captain Friday believes. A little later, I'm going to investigate. And Carmel, did you know about... what about this? Yes. Oh, you poor child. No wonder you didn't want me to go near the window last night. You can see now that there is something very peculiar going on in home. Yes. And still more peculiar, Miss Stanley, are certain other facts. For instance, Andrew Walters, uh, the uncle of uh, Carmel and Andres, died a violent death last night. Oh. Yes. Did Carmel tell you that she too only arrived yesterday evening, uh, two or three hours before you and your brother? Why, no. Two tragedies in one night. There was a third. Why, I didn't know. Oh, no. You were in no condition to be told last night. Well, who was it? A poor village half-wit who was shot to death. Oh, who did it? We don't know. Was it... Was it the same person who tried to kill me? Mm, no. I think not, Miss Stanley. Well, here's Captain Friday back. Hello, coroner. What's that? Mm-hmm, it's a fact. The town council met out in my front yard, and I gave them an earful. Yes? Mm-hmm. At my suggestion, they elected me special officer in charge of this case with the official title of constable. Oh, I say. They have more gumption than I suspected. Mm. And at my further suggestion, they elected you coroner for this special case. Jove, now. How the honors do fall. Coroner Jamie Croft. Look here, I suppose they'll be wanting an inquest next. Set for tomorrow. But, uh, see here, I've got to... You better let them do as they like. When they get an idea, there's no changing them. Uh, How about the father of a half-wit? Oh, Rich Hartley? Yes, I saw him. He's pretty badly upset. Could he give any explanation? No, not a bit. Boy had a habit of roaming at night. They couldn't keep him in. Didn't try very hard, as there seemed very little danger. Mm -hmm, Too bad. I suppose the whole village is bursting with excitement. Never anything like it in Holman before. They're holding a town meeting. A what? Mm -hmm, Town meeting. Couldn't even wait for breakfast. Everybody's there. But see here, what's the object? Oh, blow off a little steam, I guess. (laughs) They probably send a written protest to the president against the new crime wave. Yeah. Oh, and say, uh, while they're occupied, I think it'd be a swell time for us to take a look through Doc Sims' place. Walter's house, too, if we have time. We'll have a crowd trailing us everywhere if we don't give them the slip. Oh, quite, yes. Well, this will be a good time to look in at the morgue and see about Doc Sims. I don't know about you girls, though. But uh, don't you think they should stay here? You agree with me, don't you, Captain, that there's no danger? Yeah, not in the daytime. Still, there should be at least one man stay here with the girls. Well, I'm, I'm really not the least bit afraid. Please, you... You won't leave us all alone. Carmel, we'll leave your cousin Andres and Martin here. Oh, no, you won't. Why, Martin? Awake, huh? Yes, and I heard you planning to go through my uncle's house without either Gail or me present. Nothing doing. Yeah? Exactly. Why, Martin, what's gotten into you? You're not yourself. Listen, Gail, there's something darn funny going on here. You and I plump ourselves down into a mess that we don't know anything about. But, Martin, dear, we've got to trust someone. Surely you don't disbelieve Captain Friday and Dr. Croft. I don't know what I believe. Just the same, I'm not taking anybody on faith. If they're going over to Doc Sims' house, I'm going along. You're not sticking your neck out, are you, Stanley? I don't care. I know which side my bread's buttered on. Or I'm going to find out. Well, you want to leave your sister here alone? Remember, just a few hours ago, someone tried to bury her alive. Let her come along. Impossible. She isn't strong enough. She must remain quiet. What's the danger in plain daylight, anyway? Probably isn't any. We're simply not taking any chances, that's all. Then one of you stay here, and I'll go with the other. Look, fella, just who do you think is running this show? I'm going if either you or Dr. Croft go, and that's final. Please, isn't it all right if we stay here with Andres? If anything frightens us, we can call him. As a matter of fact, Captain, I'd be glad to remain, except that I feel I should have a look at uh, Sims. Yes, I want you to, Doctor. Under the circumstances, I think I want young Stanley where I can keep an eye on him. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. You're going along right now. I haven't had breakfast yet. Well, you'll have to get it when we come back. We can't wait. The town meeting will be over if we don't hurry. Oh, all right. Well, then, let's get started. You got a key to my uncle's house? And, uh, Carmel, be certain to awaken Andres if there is the least sign of trouble. Oh, yes, I promise. All right, doctor, let's go. Coming. Uh, remember, both of you, no chances. Don't worry about us, Dr. Croft. I'll be back shortly. The doctor, 
You want to stop at the morgue before we go to Doc Sims' house? Why not let me drop in at the morgue and then I'll join you at the house? It's only a step. Okay. Here's the morgue key. Oh, come on, we can cut across the lot, save a lot of time. Place is certainly deserted. Where is the town hall? That white frame building over there. Uh huh. Which is my uncle's house? Oh, the big dark one right up ahead. That other two story one about half a block up the street on the other side is Andrew Walter's place. Hmm. Who's he? Stanley, haven't you got this straight yet? Andrew Walters is Carmel and Andre's uncle. He was found hanged last night. Oh. Uh, who did it? That uh, Spanish chap, Andres? Who? What made you say that? Just wondered. Yeah? Well, let me ask you something. Did you have anything to do with the death of your uncle? What are you talking about? My question's just as good as yours. Well, here's where I turn for the morgue. Join you in a few minutes. Okay, doctor. Come along, Stanley. Ever been in Holman before? No. Well, we'll go into your uncle's place the back way and leave the door open for Dr. Croft. Some house. <laughs> Old Doc Sims had his own ideas about house construction. All right, in this way. Oh, careful. It's gloomy and the floors are bare. No windows at all on the first floor. Yes, well, that was his idea for protection against thieves. No windows on the first floor, and only a front and back door, both of which could be barred from the inside. What did he have that needed all that protection? Well, you should know that better than I. You're one of his heirs. As far as I know, most of his estates and property. Well, let's begin by examining the room where he spent most of his time. Cross between a study and a medical laboratory. Right down this hallway. Rotten. Musty smell. Oh, wait a minute. There's a push button to light the hallway somewhere along here. You seem to know this place pretty well. Oh, Doc Sims and I weren't on such bad terms. Oh, there it is. Now I'll lead off, and I know the way. All right, what are you looking for? As a matter of fact, I'm looking for two things. First, I want to find out if Sims left anything behind indicating that he anticipated his death. Oh. And second, I want to see his will. What's that got to do with you? Oh. Yep, here's the room. I said, what's my uncle's will got to do with you? you? Better stand still till I find the lights. Oh, here they are. There they are. Hog's nest. The room in which your uncle spent a good three-fourths of his life, Stanley. Smells foul. Dirt, no ventilation. Eh, never mind. Say, look here, Stanley. Have you a copy of Sim's will? No. Is your sister? No. You know whether there's a copy in this house? Why, uh... Oh. There is one here, huh? Where? I didn't say there was. I'll just take it for granted there is. Where is it? The will belongs to Gail and me. Not when there's murder concerned. Under the circumstances, the police get first look at the will. What do you want it for? Well, sometimes a man writes something into his will that... Oh, hello. What's the matter? Look there on the floor. Woman's handkerchief. Yeah, woman. Why, that belongs... See, look here, Stanley. We fooled long enough. Someone else has been here ahead of us. What for? Well, what do you think? Looking for your uncle's will, of course. If you know where it is, you'd better tell me. Whoever gets it first. My uncle wrote that there was a small safe behind the third panel on the east wall. The third panel on the... Oh, that's right here. Uh, how are we going to get behind that panel? Run your thumbnail down the crease at the left edge of the panel. Uh, you know the combination of the safe? Uh-oh. Here they go. Yep. Here's the safe. Now what? Combinations three, eight, six, nine. Beginning at zero and reversing the spin... Oh. Oh, look. Look, there he is. There he is. Go away. Hey, who turned out the lights? Stanley. Stanley. Doc Sims. Doc Sims, is that you, Doc? What are you doing here? Aren't you dead? Well, don't just stand there. Can't you speak, Doc? How is it I can see you in the dark? Don't come near. Don't. Stand back. I'm going to shoot. Oh. Oh. Hi, Captain. 
Captain Friday, where are you? <coughs> Captain, Doc Sim's body is gone from the morgue. That's queer. They couldn't have left the house already. Uh, Captain! Hello? So here's the door open. Well, there should be a light somewhere. Jove! Both of them out! Captain! Captain Friday! What's this? A guilt's handkerchief? Why? That belongs to Carmel Ruiz! bodies of Captain Friday and Martin Stanley lying together on the floor, and beside them, the handkerchief of Carmel Ruiz. And who was it who so quietly opened Doc Sim's safe after the attack on Captain Friday? Next week, at this same hour, comes the fifth episode of Dead Men Prowl, entitled The Walking Dead Captured. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. <laughs> 